Osteochondral lesions of the talus. The talus is the third most common location for OLT or OCD lesion following the knee and the elbow. The cartilage thickness of the talus is about 1 to 2 mm. It receives at least 5 times the body weight during normal ambulation and about 60% of the surface of the talus is covered by cartilage. It is not unusual for the osteochondral lesions to occur in the talus. More than 10% are bilateral, and it is more in males. About 6% of patients with ankle sprain will have the lesion, and a lot more patients will have the lesion if they have an ankle fracture. You can see the lesion also occur in patient that going for lateral ligamentous reconstruction, and that may be a contributing cause for the instability of the ankle. Most of the patient with symptoms usually play sports that are very active. So a lot of people think the primary cause of this lesion is trauma, but this is controversial. So the patient may have an acute fracture or may have repeated microtrauma, or the patient may not have a history of trauma at all. So the patient present with either acute inversion injury or chronic ankle pain with the swelling, catching, locking, and possibly ankle instability. When the patient complains of frequent instability of the ankle, the evidence of ligament laxity on stress x-rays are usually absent. Most of the patient with symptoms are in their 20s or 30s. You're going to start by getting the x-rays that may show you nothing or some lucency or a loose fragment. Besides the x-rays that you get it for the initial evaluation, there are other studies you can get. You can get the MRI, which is the study of choice if you suspect the lesion. When you treat an ankle sprain and it does not get better, you may want to order MRI to rule out occult lesion of the talus. A fluid signal behind the lesion in the MRI indicates there is a continuation between the joint and the lesion, and the lesion could be unstable and less likely to heal by itself. You can get a CT scan, which is the study of choice, if you know there is a lesion and you want to follow that lesion. So the x-ray have some staging for this OCD lesion. And it's interesting that the x-ray staging and the MRI staging are almost close to each other. So we start with the x-ray staging. The first stage is subcondylar compression fracture. The second stage partial detachment of the fracture. The third stage, complete detachment of a fracture, but no displacement. The fourth stage, complete detachment of the fracture with complete displacement. So number four is a free fragment. The MRI will show stage one, articular cartilage edema. And in the x-ray, it was a small area of subcondylar compression. Stage 2 in the MRI will show a fracture, the same like in the x-ray classification. Stage 3 will show a fracture that is detached but not displaced. Stage 4 will show completely displaced fragment. And 3 and 4 look like they are the same like the x-ray. MRI have a stage 5, which will be subcondylar cyst formation. It is noted that the radiographic and the arthroscopic findings don't always correlate. So what are the lesions that you usually see? There are two types of lesions you can see, medial or lateral. 
The medial is called posteromedial, and the lateral is called anterolateral. I find with these lesions, it's actually opposite to common sense understanding. For example, the medial lesions they are common, they are usually non-traumatic, they are larger, they are deeper, they are posterior, they are less symptomatic, which is opposite to common sense, larger and deeper and less symptomatic. The lateral lesions are less common, they are traumatic, they are smaller, they are shallower, they are anterior, or maybe slightly central. This small, shallow lesion are usually symptomatic and difficult to treat without surgery. It has a lower incidence of a spontaneous healing. They become displaced in the joint and symptomatic. You know, displaced means is a stage 4 in X-ray or in an MRI classification. Usually, this lateral lesion occur from inversion or inversion dorsiflexion trauma. Treatment You treat this lesion conservatively first by non-weight bearing, shortly cast, or a boot for four to six weeks, especially if the lesion is acute and non-displaced. In general, if the lesion is a lower grade, one or two, you treat it conservatively. Surgery is done if the conservative treatment fails. You will do surgery also if the lesion is a high grade, like three or four by an MRI. Surgery is usually arthroscopic. In general, if the lesion is lower grade, like one and two, you will treat the lesion conservatively. Treatment of lesion T and 4 is surgical. Non-displaced lesions are treated with immobilization and they may heal. Regardless how the lesion appears on x-rays, if the patient is asymptomatic after conservative treatment, then observe the patient. Even if there is no evidence of healing, on X-rays or MRI. Loose fragments on X-rays are indication for surgery. If it's an acute fracture, especially the anterolateral fragment, consider reduction and fixation with bioabsorbable screws. If the lesion is less than one centimeter, then you will do excision, curettage, or drilling of the lesion. If the lesion is greater than one centimeter with the cartilage intact or the cap intact, then it will do retrograde drilling or bone graft. If the lesion is greater than one centimeter and displaced, then you will do open reduction and internal fixation or you will do osteochondral graft. Usually, ankle arthroscopy is the procedure that is used in OCD lesion of the talus. However, comparing the scope and the open procedure, they're almost about the same. There are clearly a lot of advances in OCD lesion of the talus. And it doesn't matter what operation you will do, you will need to do some rehab after surgery that will strengthen the perineal muscles and will allow you to get proprioception training and the stability of the ankle joint. Thank you very much. I hope I was helpful.